John Warboy's crimes were shocking. In March 2009, the black cab driver was convicted of 19 offences, including one count of rape and six sexual assaults on a number of women. His method of attack was to ply his victims with alcohol and drugs. Sometimes he claimed to be rescuing them from illegal drivers. After his conviction, the police said a number of women had come forward and that his alleged victims now numbered more than 100. In November, after Warboys had served 10 years of an indeterminate sentence, a three-member parole board decided to approve his release with stringent licence conditions. His victims were horrified, saying they weren't told about the decision before it was made public. And today, that decision has been quashed. A legal challenge by two of the women he attacked was upheld by the High Court. One of the victims, known only as DSD, welcomed the verdict. I feel a bit emotional and I think we've achieved so much and thank you. But it's wrong that we've had to be put in this situation. It is really wrong. As victims, we should be supported and helped all the way, not have to fight every step in court. You know, this case is quite unique. There's still certain things that need to change. I would like to think that although there was only a certain number in this case of prosecutions and he was only charged with a certain number, I would like to see the victims that were linked to this case being able to have some sort of input because at the moment it feels like we are non-victims and I really do have confidence that the parole board, although it went wrong last time, will make the right decision the next time because now it's highlighted where they went wrong and you can't put the blame on them. It's just the whole system failed in this case. One of the main criticisms of the parole board made by the High Court is that the panel failed to take into account the numerous allegations made against Warboys that were never taken to court. In response, the government said it'll make a number of changes. The chairman of the parole board, Nick Hardwick, is standing down. In his resignation letter to the Justice Secretary, David Gork, he apologised for his mistakes but made it clear it wasn't his decision to go. Earlier this year, David Gork said it would not be appropriate for him to intervene in the case, angering many victims. Today, he admitted his department had made mistakes. The dossier that was provided to the parole board for their hearing in November didn't contain all the information that it should have done, uh, and I apologise for that. But I think we also should be clear that the MOJ, working through the National Probation Service, recommended that Warboys was not released. And in reaching a different conclusion, the parole board were insufficiently inquisitive of the information they lacked. David Gork uh, from the Ministry of Justice or the MOJ. Well, Philippa Kaufman QC is the barrister who represented the two victims who challenged the parole board decision. She told me what she thought the failings of the parole board were. The critical failure of the parole board was not to look at the wider allegations of offending. So Warboys was convicted of only 14 offences. He was only ever charged with a sample of the 105 victims that the police believed he had offended against. And that's for understandable reasons, because you can't overload an indictment. You can't have a jury sitting there looking at 105 cases without the risk that they'll get confused and justice won't be done. So they were following a standard process and the parole board confined itself to those 14 offences that he had been convicted of and he confined himself in terms of what he admitted to those 14 offences as well. And the parole board then concluded that his risk had reduced because he had now gained insight, because he was open and honest and because he fully accepted his responsibility. But the problem was, of course, if you started to look at the wider offending, all of that is called into question and they didn't give themselves the opportunity to call anything into question because they didn't look at it. But whose responsibility was it that they should have had access to all that material? The reason the material was before them and the reason we were able to challenge their decision was because some of the report writers happened to mention that 80 plus offences were out there that the police also suspected he had committed. 
the responsibility to have actually put that which was obviously material before the board was actually the Ministry of Justice officials who prepare his dossier. And the Pro Board is typically entirely dependent on what is put before them by the Secretary of State for Justice and by his officials. And they didn't do it. And yet today it's Nick Hardwick, the chairman of the Parole Board, who's resigned. Absolutely. And I think that is a piece of political scapegoating. I think it's completely inappropriate. David Gork has taken no responsibility on behalf of his officials for this failure. But Nick Hardwick, as chairman of the Parole Board, has to take some responsibility for the way in which the organisation that he chairs functions. Before you require heads to roll because something has gone wrong, you have to ascertain precisely what has gone wrong and who's to blame. Because it used to be the case that serious cases like this would be heard by a High Court judge. And High Court judges aren't allowed to sit anymore in parole boards until they've retired because there aren't enough High Court judges to do High Court judge work because of big cuts in funding. People don't want to apply. So what we see here is a system creaking at the seams and failing through under-resourcing. Nick Hardwick's head should not have to roll for that because he's doing what he can. The kind of reforms then that have been proposed by David Gork today, you're going to see greater transparency, another process for victims to appeal to parole board decisions. Are those the kind of reforms do you think that will address the sort of concerns that you've just set out? No, absolutely not. So I think David Gork's suggestion that the way to remedy this problem is to create another process which is going to increase the resources required by the Parole Board to comply with that process, is a completely unnecessary expense. And it's all about showing himself as a politician to be responsive to the very, very real pain that the victims in these cases have gone through and to the public outcry at what happened in this case. But actually... We have, for the last 20 however many years, dealt with errors in the parole board's reasoning by taking proceedings for judicial review. That's what a prisoner has had to do day in, day out, if they're dissatisfied with the parole board's decision. It's worked, it's sufficed, and never before until today have victims ever complained until these two. So what's the need for this extra system? Of course I support greater transparency and that's something that is now required as a matter of law. He doesn't even have a choice. He's got to do it because the court's told him his rules are unlawful. Philippa Kaufman, QC. 